Hello and welcome to Discovering the Jewish Jesus. I'm your host, Dustin Roberts, and today we're going to be preparing for the end times. The book of Revelation is a prophetic word given to us by the Father and His Son to help us prepare for the last days. But for many people, Revelation is a confusing book, and that's why Rabbi Schneider is going to help us decrypt this mysterious book. Our lesson today is a review of everything that we've learned so far in this series. And if you've missed any of the messages, you can catch up online at discoveringthejewishjesus.com. And hey, don't don't forget to download Rabbi's Study Guide. It's free, and right now, here is Rabbi Schneider. Father God, we just worship you today. I pray, Father, for a spirit of wisdom and revelation, and I ask, Father, that you would release your work into the minds and hearts of your people and prepare us for the end. In Jesus' name, amen. As we begin, we should start out with what Jesus said about the book of Revelation. Jesus said, Two times in the book of Revelation, blessed is he that studies the words of this prophecy. You see, the book of Revelation is not just informational, but the Lord gave us this prophetic word that we would be prepared for the end. That's the point. Many people have begun to study messianic prophecy. Many people have, have looked at prophecy about the end times. And their primary aim is just to gain knowledge. But the goal that God has for us in studying end time prophecy is that we would be prepared by it for what we're going to face as things become more difficult in the world and for King Jesus' soon return. So once again off the bat, I'm making the point, beloved children of God, how important the book of Revelation is and how it is so much a part of God's heart for us that we study it, that we will be prepared to meet him. Now, the book of Revelation deals with God doing some incredible things on the earth before the return of Jesus. Then we move in to his return and then we look at the new heavens and the new earth. Let's go back to the beginning. John is on the island of Patmos. He's been exiled there because of his faith in Jesus. The book of Revelation begins by telling us as he was isolated on this island, it says that suddenly on the Lord's day one day, he heard a voice from heaven and he was transported into the spirit realm and he saw the Lord on his throne. He heard Jesus speak to him. Jesus communicated to him through angels. And what Jesus showed him was what was going to happen on the earth in the last days. Now, John sees in heaven, he sees Jesus, and he sees Jesus opening up a book, a set of seals, a scroll. And as Jesus opens up the scroll, and he begins to go into the scroll, judgments begin to pour out upon the earth. All in all, there are 21 judgments that John sees Jesus releasing upon the earth in the last days. 21 judgments. Now listen, I don't want you to become overwhelmed by the details. So just, you know, get the main concept here. But there are 21 judgments. And these 21 judgments are broken up into three sets. The first seven judgments are called the seven seals. Then the second seven judgments are released with seven trumpets. And then the last seven judgments are called the bowls of wrath, the seven bowls of wrath. So there are seven seals that are broken. Then there are seven trumpets. And when the seventh trumpet blows, it releases what are known as the seven bowls of wrath. Now, when the seventh trumpet blows before the seven bowls of wrath are released, something very mysterious happens. The church, beloved ones, is taken off the earth. So what I've been teaching is that God's people, the church, will be in the world for the first seven seals, then they'll be here through the six trumpets. Once again, the seven seals and each trumpet releases judgment. But at the blowing of the seventh trumpet, the church is taken up or raptured out of the world. Now, 
Those that have studied end time prophecy recognize that there is debate on when the church is taken out of the world. Will the church be taken out of the world before any of the judgments begin? Will the church be taken out of the world in the middle of this judgment of God that's being poured out upon the earth? Or will the church be taken out after all the judgments are poured out on the world? What I am teaching you, beloved, is that the church will be taken out of the world before, listen, the seven bowls of wrath or the wrath of God. Listen again, I know it's confusing. Seven seals, seven trumpets, seven bowls of wrath. I believe the church will be in the world for the first seven judgments that are released with the first seven seals. I believe that the church will be in the world once again for the judgments that fall when the first six trumpets are blown. But when the seventh and the last trumpet is blown, at that point, the church will be taken out of the world And that seventh trumpet not only brings the rapture about where the church is taken out of the world, but the seventh trumpet, the book of Revelation tells us, also releases God's final seven judgments on the earth, which are known as the seven bowls of wrath. Now, the book of 1 Thessalonians tells us this, speaking again, that the church will be raptured out of the world at the seventh trumpet, which is the last trumpet. Listen what the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 and 17 tells us. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we are alive and remain, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we shall always be with the Lord. Paul tells us in the book of Corinthians that it's going to be at the last trumpet that the church will be taken out of the world. So we just read in Thessalonians that the church will be taken out when the trump sounds. And Paul gives us further revelation in the book of Corinthians that the trump in which the church will be caught up into the air to meet the Lord in the air with, the trump that's going to sound is the last trump or the seventh trump. But I'm going to make it easier to understand. 29 times... In the book of Revelation, Jesus and his acts are connected, listen, to the Lamb of God. Jesus is referred to as the Lamb of God in the book of Revelation 29 times. This is very important to understand because the Bible is unity. The Old and New Testaments are in unity with each other. The New Testament is not separate from the Old Testament, but the New Testament completes the Old Testament, and the same type of patterns that we see in the Old Testament are repeated in the New Testament. For example, just to take a little bit of a side note, think about Joseph. He is rejected by his brothers, and then he becomes the savior of his brothers, right? A type of Jesus, rejected by Israel, but he becomes the savior of Israel. We could go on and on and show you how the patterns in the Old Testament or the Hebrew Bible are fulfilled in the New Testament. This is why Jesus said, do not think I've come to abolish the law and the prophets, for I've not come to abolish, but to, listen now, fulfill. So knowing that the Bible is a book of patterns, And knowing that Jesus is referred to 29 times in the book of Revelation as the Lamb, we have to ask ourselves, what could God be saying to us about Jesus being the Lamb? In other words, Jesus in the book of Revelation is the Lamb. He's referred to as the offspring of David. He's referred to as the bright and morning star. But those are just, you know, one or two times. But overwhelmingly, he's the Lamb. So we have to ask ourselves, since the Old and New Testaments are connected, that's why the first chapter in the New Testament, Matthew chapter 1, verse 1, begins by showing us Jesus' genealogy. In other words, by connecting the two together. Since Jesus is referred to as the Lamb, we have to ask ourselves, what does this mean? And we find out about the Lamb and the Lamb's ministry by going back, what? To the Tanakh, to the Torah, to the Old Testament, to the book of Exodus chapter 12, where we find that Israel was delivered out of Egypt through the blood of the Lamb. Jesus' whole ministry is bringing the deliverance of Israel out of Egypt to its fullest climax when he delivers all of God's people, Jew and Gentile alike, out of the world, out of the dominion of Satan, and into heaven through, listen now, his blood. You're listening to Discovering the Jewish Jesus, and Rabbi will be right back. 
But first, did you know that you can receive real-time encouragement straight from Rabbi through text message? Visit discoveringthejewishjesus.com and click on the link that says Rabbi Text Me. Or you can text the keyword Rabbi to the number 88777. Rabbi sends these special text messages as the Holy Spirit leads, and he looks forward to connecting with you real soon. Thank you for remembering that Discovering the Jewish Jesus is a listener-supported ministry. Rabbi Schneider's teachings are made possible through the generous gifts from people like you who understand the importance of sharing the good news of Jesus' return. Because of you, we are changing lives all over the world. Give online by visiting discoveringthejewishjesus.com or call 800-777-7835. That's 800-777-7835. And now let's get back to Rabbi's message. When Jesus was first introduced to the world through John the Baptist at the Jordan River, John pointed at Yeshua and he said to everyone that was there, behold, the Lamb of God. Jesus is introduced to the world as the Lamb. And in the book of Revelation, at the end of everything, he is also seen as the Lamb. Peter told us that we've been redeemed and purchased for God by the precious blood of the Lamb. Paul told us that Christ has become our Passover. So knowing that Jesus brings the Exodus story in the Torah to fulfillment by becoming the Lamb of God, that purchases God's children out of the world for God himself, that he is the deliverer and the savior through the blood. We have to then interpret the book of Revelation, which identifies Jesus as the lamb through the lens of the Passover story, through the lens of Exodus. So when we think about God pouring out his judgment on the Egyptians, when we think about God in the book of Exodus, pouring out his judgments on the Egyptians, we ask ourselves, where were his people? Where was Israel when he was pouring out his judgments? We know that there were 10 plagues that God poured out upon Egypt. Where was God's people when these 10 plagues were being poured out? Beloved ones, they were in Egypt. God protected them in Egypt, but they still felt the effects of the plagues. And so it will repeat itself. This same pattern is going to repeat itself at the end of the age for the first seven seals, the first six trumpets. And then when the seventh trumpet is blown, God takes his people out of the world. Then he releases his wrath, just as God did with Egypt. He released his final wrath on them when he drowned them all in the sea. Israel was in Egypt for the 10 plagues, but when God poured out his final wrath upon the Egyptians, he first took out Israel out of that scenario by parting the sea supernaturally, which is a symbol of the rapture. He translated them supernaturally to the other side of the sea by parting the sea, and then Egypt was drowned in that same sea when God poured out his final wrath upon them. So let me sum it up once again. Israel, in the book of Exodus, is a type of God's church today. Egypt, in the book of Exodus, is a type of the world. Israel was in Egypt, and the church will be in the world as God's judgments begin to fall on the world, but will be protected. Pharaoh, in the book of Exodus, is a symbol or a shadow, listen now, of Satan. The signs, the false signs and wonders that Pharaoh's magicians did in the presence of Moses are a symbol of the type of false supernatural activity that will take place upon the earth during the end of the age, both in the secular realm as well as with the false prophets and false teachers that will even try to infiltrate the church. Many lying signs and wonders, the New Testament tells us, will take place at the end of the age. Jesus said in Matthew 24, watch out for false teachers. Watch out for false prophets. Jesus said that the supernatural deception is going to be so great at the end of the age that if it were possible, even the elect would be deceived. And so we see that back in the Old Testament when Pharaoh's magicians took their staff, threw them on the ground, and they turned into snakes, lying signs and wonders. 
Furthermore, we see that the plagues that God poured out upon Egypt in the book of Exodus will be almost identically repeated during the great tribulation on the earth. For example, we're going to see the waters turn to blood upon the earth just as they were in ancient Egypt. We're going to see there's going to be a plague of frogs that will cover the land, which are symbolic of demonic spirits, just as frogs covered the land in ancient Egypt. We see this, for example, in Exodus 8, verse 1 and 2, and then the fulfillment in Revelation 16, 13 and 14. We also see in the book of Exodus that great boils came upon the Egyptians in Exodus 9, verses 8 and 9. Similarly, we're going to see the plague of boils come upon those that don't know God on the earth during the great tribulation in Revelation 16, 2. We read, for example, as well, continuing... In the book of Exodus, the giant hailstones fell upon ancient Egypt. In Exodus 9, verse 23 and 25, similarly, we'll see the same plague of giant hailstones falling upon the world, bombarding mankind in Revelation chapter 8 and Revelation chapter 16. And so these are just once again examples of the pattern that's repeated here. We need to be ready. Jesus gave us the book of Revelation so we would be ready. The church, beloved ones, is going to be facing difficult times. Now, this is nothing to be afraid of. Jesus told us when these things happen, he said, do not be afraid. He said, but rejoice and look up for your redemption draweth nigh. But we need to be prepared. We can't just have this mentality that, you know, we're never going to face difficult times because if we have that mentality, and what I'm telling you is correct, which I believe it is, when difficult times come, you won't be prepared to face them. This is why Jesus gave us the book of Revelation. This is why he instructed us to buy from him silver and gold. In other words, to build our life upon him, to dig deep, he said, and build your home on the rock so that when the waves come and the floods come, you're going to stand. Beloved one, listen to me. If I'm wrong, and Jesus takes his people out of the world before the tribulation begins, then if you believe what I'm saying and I'm wrong, you'll have lost nothing. Because after all, what Jesus is after isn't that we have all our end time theology right, our I's dotted and our T's crossed all correctly. What he's after is he wants us to be prepared for his return. If I'm wrong and Jesus takes us out of the world before anything difficult happens on the earth, before the tribulation begins, you've lost nothing. You've prepared yourself for his return because you thought you were going to face difficult times and he came earlier than you thought. Praise God, you were ready. But listen, if I'm right and you don't receive what I'm saying and get ready and get prepared knowing that you're going to face difficult times and you just kind of coast through life and as a result, you never build your faith deep in him. If I'm right and you don't pay attention, when these difficult times come, you may fall away. Because Jesus said in the last days, many will fall away from the faith. Beloved one, this is nothing to argue about, but I want to deliver a message to you that is more important now than ever. Difficult times are coming. We already see, beloved, the birth pangs. We're looking all over the world now and seeing rogue countries get their hands on nuclear weapons. We've seen morality falling apart all over the world. These things are not going to decrease in intensity. They're going to increase in intensity. And you know what? Jesus told us when we see these things, we should get ready for his return is near. Beloved, I'm here today to tell you that Jesus is coming back soon. He's coming back for you and he wants you and I to be ready. You see, Jesus loves us. He's after our hearts. And I don't want anything that I shared with you today to make you afraid because God doesn't want us to be afraid. But what I do want to do is provoke you to be more serious than ever about your personal relationship with God. You're listening to the Bible teaching of Rabbi Schneider here on Discovering the Jewish Jesus. Our study today was from our series, Decrypting the Book of Revelation. Well, the point of today's message, it was to get caught up on everything that Rabbi has taught us up to this point in this lengthy but engaging series. And if you'd like to take your studies of this fascinating topic further, make sure and visit us online at discoveringthejewishjesus.com. 
We've got a variety of articles and study tools to help you engage more fully with the material Rabbi presented. And while you're online, we'd love for you to learn more about partnering with us. And right now to share a little bit more about why praying for this nonprofit ministry and financially supporting our mission to reach people with the authentic and uncompromising Word of God is so important. Here is Rabbi Schneider. To say the book of Revelation is a heavy word from the Lord is an understatement. Jesus said in the book of Revelation chapter three, verse 17 and 18, these words, because you say I am rich and you become wealthy and have need of nothing, and you do not know that you are wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked, I advise you to buy from me gold refined by fire so that you may become rich. You see, the people in the church of Laodicea that he was addressing here, they thought they were wealthy but they didn't know God, they didn't love God. Jesus said, I advise you to buy from me, pure gold. Beloved ones, I wanna encourage you, don't let your money separate you from God. And I say the same thing to myself. Jesus talked a lot about the relationship between God and money or God and mammon because he knew that man had to make a choice. Would he choose God or would he choose money? I want to encourage you to believe God and trust Him with your finances. Beloved, when we're faithful to God with our finances, it sets the rest of our life in order with Him. If the Lord is leading you to give a gift of any amount, let me invite you to give us a call. You can reach us at 800-777-7835. Or if you would prefer, you can donate online at discoveringthejewishjesus.com. We are truly so grateful for your support. And as our way of saying thank you for your generous donations and your faithful obedience to God's leading, we'll send you Rabbi Schneider's message of the month. And it's available also as a digital download. We'll also send you our current newsletter and it's filled with important insights, outreach events, and so much more like our current Taking the Rainbow Back movement. You know, God made the rainbow as a manifestation of His glory. And as children of God, we need to stand firm on the truth of God's Word as we boldly share with the world what the rainbow really means. The rainbow is not a representation of man's pride, but of God's glory and promise. And so we're asking you to join with us July 28th through the 30th as we encourage believers all over the world to wake up and join the Rainbow Revolution. You can let us know that you're standing with us in prayer when you write to us at Discovering the Jewish Jesus, P.O. Box 777, Blissfield, Michigan, 49228. And if you'd like to participate in our Collective Action Weekend on July the 28th, or you'd like to order a t-shirt, make sure to connect with us online at takingtherainbowback.com. And now to speak a blessing over us before we wrap up, here is Rabbi Schneider. The ironic blessing in the book of Numbers chapter 6 is not a blessing that comes from an impersonal being out there somewhere in the heavens. This special blessing comes from a person, Yahweh God Almighty, our creator and maker. So receive God's blessing into your life right now. Yahweh, 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 The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift you up with his countenance and the Lord give you, beloved one, his peace. God bless you and shalom. I'm your host, Dustin Roberts, and Discovering the Jewish Jesus is a production of Shalom Ministries. 
Be sure and join us next time when Rabbi Schneider continues decrypting the book of Revelation. That's coming up Tuesday on Discovering the Jewish Jesus.